Hello and welcome to Happy Wine Guy TV. I'm the Happy Wine Guy, and tonight I'm joined with a good friend and wine aficionado, Kevin Hodge. Hello, Kevin. Hey, Andy. What's up, man? Hey, just glad to have you here and drinking with you again. Glad to be here. Hey, um, tonight we're drinking wine. Go figure. Tonight's wine is a red wine from a very popular place in Chile, and this wine is Route 1. Carmenere. You may not have heard of the Carmenere grape, but we're going to tell you a little bit about it. Um, hey, Kevin, let's uh, get a little taste of this wine. Uh, sure. show, show it to our view in yeah. public. All right, so now you got an idea of that label. You can find this in your local stores today at around the $12 to $14 range. And um, as Kevin is pouring, I can notice right away a little bit about the color. Not dark purple, but more of a garnet, which would be a light purple color. Um, not ruby red, probably garnet, I think. What do you think? I think garnet's good. It's got a little bit of that rosy edge to it. That, uh, kind of that uh, slightly opaque, but, but uh, light, lovely violet tone. I would give violet um, a shot there, too. Um, when we're talking about Chilean wines, and this is from what region? The Colchagua Valley. I've heard of Colchagua. You might not have, but if you look for it on the label, it's um, an up-and-coming region where you'll see a lot of red wine being made. Um, Chile, South American wine, uh, New World wine, is lumped in with Argentina a lot of times, but the wines are much different from Argentina. Chile, they've got the Andes Mountains going through them, so don't think that if you drink Argentinian wines, you drink Chilean wines because they're much different. You agree? Just no doubt no doubt about it, Andy. When you're talking uh, Chile versus Argentina, it's almost old world, new world, comparing California to uh, Europe to the to where Chilean wines are more of the European style, that old world, a little bit of dirt, a little bit of earth, to where the Argentina um, wine production is much more similar to the California wines. They're fresh, ripe, intense, uh, and gorgeous. And not to mention, Carmenere uh, was a grape that uh, over a decade ago I was selling wine wholesale. And they actually recalled Merlot that was on the shelf. They actually went in the uh, so-called wine police. The inter international wine trade went in and said, "Are they like the Dream Police?" They, they, they are kind of like the Dream Police. I've heard of that. Um, but there is no Robin Zander within the wine police. But the wine police came in and said, uh, "Well, why does your Merlot have stripes on the leaves?" And they said, "Well, what are you talking about?" Well, sure enough, Carmenere was a long lost grape from Bordeaux that wasn't classified as one of the five great. Uh, Great grapes. The noble grapes. The noble grapes, exactly. And so essentially yeah, they made them, made them recall the wine. I had wine on the shelf that I had to recall because it was not truly Merlot in the bottle, it was Carmenere, and hence you started seeing it bottled on its own. But it's uh, kind of the. Uh, it's the, the Merlot the, the of earthy, South America. It's the earthy brethren to uh, soft subtle Merlot. Right, so they thought it was Merlot for a long time, they bottled it as Merlot, and when yes. after further investigation, it turned out to be Carmenere. So you might not have heard of Carmenere out there in Happy Wine Guy TV land, um, but we're going to introduce you to it tonight. I get, as you said, old world, kind of a more of a musty, um, dank kind of nose. Thanks, good. I almost, I almost refer to it as uh, like a poor man's Bordeaux. Almost for a twelve fourteen dollar bottle. If you were to buy about a twenty twenty five dollar bottle of Bordeaux, this is kind of what you begin. So if you want to go old school and you don't want to drink your California Argentina stuff, this is a good way to go. It's pretty. That spiciness on the nose um, sometimes can be um, green pepper like, and sometimes that's off putting, but sometimes it's fabulous. No doubt about it. It, it screams for food. Screams for food. What kind of food would you like? Would you pair with this wine? I'd say a grilled flank steak, mm -hmm. something of that nature. Um, kind of match spice with spice. Yeah, match spice with spice. But at the same time, I think it's mm -hmm. a soft enough oh. red that you don't need to have a ton of fat. You don't need a ribeye, something of that intense nature. 
um, you know, something like a flank steak, even pork tenderloin, filet mignon, things that are lower in fat, it's soft enough that it'll balance out, but that earth tone just matches beautifully, especially if you have any sort of steak with mushrooms, this would be absolutely gorgeous. Nice. I was surprised by this wine because I got a snootful of spice on the nose, but then when I tasted it, it was soft, as you said. You know, yeah. it, it, it has a lot of flavor, but it doesn't kick you in the head like a, like a meal. It is actually pretty easy drinking. Absolutely right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Route 1, Carmenere from Chile, getting you somewhere between 11 13 $14. Um, delivering a, a flavor right from the front to the back. Hangs around a little bit, you know, not, not a dramatically long finish. But the neat thing is, it does taste French like old world life, and it would be great with food. So um, I'm gonna have to give this wine, um, you know, pretty much a happy wine guy. Um, thumbs up. I would agree wholeheartedly. If you're familiar with the wines from Ventiscaro, uh, the winery that this is actually produced from, oh. you'll be right there and you'll be very impressed. This is a second label that they did, kind of to show off the uh, the root structure and the vineyard quality. But uh, I, I think the the HWG is is right on that. This is a beautiful value. Uh, that the the spice quality, the fruit quality, that for for the value, it, it would be tough to beat. And if any of you know. Um, Matt Nevinger in the Kansas City area, he'll be happy to show you where to buy this in town. And if you need any help, you can always find the Happy Wine Guy, HWG, happywineguy.com. I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Tumblr. We blog a lot. So, I have to um, count this as another victory for Happy Wine Guy TV. A great wine, great company, and um, let's do our sign um, It's great having you here, Kevin Hodge. And to the crowd there, wish you were here.